It's time now for County Wide, a presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. You'll hear about the interesting issues and happenings that affect all our lives. Here's today's County Wide. Well, a good day and welcome to the program. It is County Wide. I'm Brad Miller. We're happy to welcome into the guest today Mona Stevens. Is Mona Mona is with the Yavapai Casa for Kids Foundation. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. On the ball so far. And CASA means what? Court Appointed Special Advocate. Okay. And that's just exactly what it sounds like. We've talked with other folks uh, from your organization or another branch of your organization before about working with kids. And especially to me, it means um, youngsters uh, who have been probably removed from their homes, maybe after violence or a parent's arrest or things like that. And then they work through the courts, perhaps to testify or things that happen there. Is that kind of what CASA is about? Um, My... Sort of, sort okay, of, help, definitely. Help me, help me out. So help, help our listeners understand. The CASAs, the court-appointed special advocates, they are volunteers um, that are court-appointed. And what they do is they work with kids that are in foster care. So yeah, their kids are going to be sometimes testifying, but mostly they're going back and forth to court as their parents try to get them back. Okay. Um, and try to prove that whatever situation is rectified or or maybe they're going for an adoption or a severance or something. Okay. But either way, those court appointed special advocates, they kind of serve as a mentor, but then they also go into the courts and then they make sure that the voice of the child is actually heard. Um, and that they're there for them. Um, in every single court hearing. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So advocate really is the key word here. Mm -hmm. Kind of helping a child have a voice where he or she may not be able to. Yeah. Where a lot of times there's all these competing interests and it's just, what does the kid want? And what is, what's best for that child? Honestly, especially in an environment where DCS has high turnover, um, foster homes might not be the same right now. I think, I don't know how it could be 3.5 or whatever, but that's how many times a kid's going to change homes. And so with all that turnover of these people in my life are not being consistent, that is one consistent person, that advocate. And they're they're outside of the court and in the courtroom. Are volunteers kind of assigned for a lengthy period of time? Then it sounds like it. Um, Usually what they would sign up is for that case, yeah. So for the duration of the case. Okay. So it might be... Um, it might be a really quick case and be over within a year. Gotcha. It might stretch out for a couple years. Well, that's incredibly important work, um, just kind of helping the children through things that maybe they'll understand, uh, given their age, given their situations, and every kid, like every adult, is going to be different. Uh, but that's a tremendous amount of distress and trauma, frankly, uh, to have to digest when you're nine years old, say, and to have one person be some kind of constant and all this grown-up turmoil that's going on around you has got to be incredibly comforting. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, incredible. Now let's talk about it this way because you're not uh, specifically with CASA in a way. You're with the foundation, the Yavapai, Yavapai CASA for Kids Foundation, kind of the fundraising arm that helps the CASA volunteers and staff do their good work. Is, is that right? Yeah, and okay. more. Okay, and more. So it's like those old commercials. But wait, there's more. (laughs) Yeah, so we do support the CASAs and we make sure that, you know, their gas money is paid because you might have a you might have a kid who's removed from the Verde Valley, but then next thing you know, they're living in Kingman. Right. So the CASA would need to drive to Kingman to see them. So we'll pay for gas, we'll pay for trainings, um, we'll pay for things like that. But we also provide direct support to the foster families and the foster youth. I would think, and maybe there is, it, it just seems like this program, as it kind of works through the courts, that um, having people advocate for the kids would be so important that there would be local or state, perhaps even federal funding to help with that. But is that not the case? So the court appointed special advocates, that is a program of the court. So it is funded from the state. Okay. Um, however, the funds are restricted. So basically what the funds are for is for the CASA staff, um, for the CASA trainings and things of that nature to put on, basically operate the program. Okay. But it's not reimbursing CASAs for their gas mileage that they're putting on their car. Okay. Um, which is actually a barrier to people wanting to do this or being able to do this you job. You bet. You bet. Um, 
So they're not paying for those things and they have restricted funds. So what we do is we are able to raise the money and it's unrestricted. So then we can help CASAs in the way that they need to be that the court or the state isn't able to help them. And then we're able to help actually the families as well in the same way that the state's not able to help or to supplement what the state does provide. Like with a lot of things that are state funded, there's money there, but there's never enough. For the program to be as excellent as it is in Yavapai County and has been for a long time. Yeah. That's what the volunteer difference uh, has made and the folks who have uh, uh, been uh, benefactors of the CASA program and other youth-oriented programs. And we know dozens of them. And we know that uh, the spirit of uh, of giving and charitability in uh, Yavapai County has always been uh, always been strong. Now, there's been a little – you've got a major fundraiser coming up, and we'll talk about that toward the end of the show. But I want to mention it right now. On June 15th, uh, the Champions for Children, a Midsummer's Night's, Midsummer Night's Dream, and it's the ninth, uh, ninth Annual Gala for Foster Youth and for this program to raise the funds exactly the way you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that, and we'll revisit it at the end of the show because I want people to be able to kind of dial the phone number or go to the website or become – active in this, but it's just like it sounds. It's a fundraiser for this great uh, program. Yeah, it's, I would say, capitalize fun and fundraiser because it really is okay. like a party, but it's a day where you get to come, dress up nice. We have um, costume contests because it's a Midsummer Night's Dream. So think, you know, fairies and mythical creatures in the forest and things so there's masquerades that you could wear and it's (laughs) like a contest and then there's music and then there's performances by stilt walkers and then there's lots (laughs) of talk about what we're doing there's yeah so that way you can see the impact there's a lot of heartstrings being pulled but it's also having a good time um dancing food desserts drinks we have we're calling it a fairy toss tournament because it's on theme, but it's really a cornhole tournament. So you can win things. <laughs> okay. You could do your auction. It's really going to be just a fun time, but it's a fun time with a purpose. We are raising funds for these kids that um, I think are the most vulnerable youth in our county. Yeah. Well, uh, and minus this uh, effort and minus the folks that have turned out for the past nine galas or eight, and we'll t- uh, show up, I'm sure, for, for, for the ninth. Uh, they really make it run. It's taking a program that's going to be there in some form and making it really something special and something to be proud of in our county, doing the best we can by our kids. And it takes money to do those things. Yeah. And that's where your foundation comes in. Yeah, and it's also showing them that it's not just dollars. It's showing them, like, right. hey, you know, that $1,000 that you gave us, you know, we were able to put it together with somebody else's $1,000, and we paid – for a foster teen who had a child and that child um, passed away for that child to get cremated. And that meant the world to that kid. Right. You know, we paid for somebody to go to camp, but what was really special was that that kid was separated from their brother or sister and they got to go to camp with their brother and sister. And it was the first time they spent a week together since they were removed from their home. So it's like showing them these and those are real stories that I just said. Of, I can tell yeah. the way you 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 recollected them so quickly. I was going to say that really happened. What you're describing, yeah, and that's yeah. what we're showing them. It's like let's have fun and forget about spending the money. Like spend the money, have fun. It's going to be beneficial to you anyway. You're going to spend money on a ticket to go there, right? Yeah. You're going to spend money on your drinks and then because food's included and it's only alcoholic drinks that are going to cost. You're going to spend money to play games and win prizes and on. Um, auction items that are going to be at a discount than you would even get them in real life. And all of that is going back to the kids. All of that is translated. Your right. fun translates into impact for these children. Yeah. And the dollars are great in themselves, but it's just the spirit of showing and giving uh, that is going to resonate with them into their own adulthoods. Mm-hmm. That's That's great stuff. We need to take just a short break. Uh, Our guest is Mona Stevens. The ninth annual gala for foster youth coming up on June 15th. Champions for Children, a Midsummer Night's Dream. We're talking about the Yavapai Casa for Kids Foundation today, and there's plenty of ways that you might become more involved, too, you and our listening audience. We'll take a break. It's countywide. We'll be back right after this. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. 
Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call Jana at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686. Your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We welcome you back to the program. Again, it's Countywide. I'm Brad Miller. Our guest today is Mona Stevens and uh, Mona with the Yavapai Casa for Kids Foundation. Coming up, that ninth gala for foster youth. Uh, that'll be in the middle of June. And uh, Champions for Children, a Midsummer Night's Dream, it's called. And that's a terrific way for you to become involved in this terrific program. Really kind of a series of uh, uh, of programs. Now, let me ask you, before we get too far, um, th- there was kind of a Casa... Um, program for each side of Mingus Mountain for a time, and that's what been combined, or there's been a change there. What what has happened? Yes. So for a long time, um, there was two what they call CASA support councils. Okay. Um, so basically, Yavapai CASA for Kids Foundation operated on the Prescott side of the Mingus Mountain, and then there was a Verde support council. That was the name of their group. They operated on the Verde side. Okay. Um, and for a long time, that's how it was split. Like if a kid's case originated anywhere on that Prescott side to Black Canyon City side of the Mingus Mountain, our nonprofit would make sure those kids were taken care of. And then on this side of the mountain, the other nonprofit would. So recently that nonprofit has dissolved, um, and what it has allowed us to do is to come over to this side of the mountain and provide uh, more services and, ex- well, really give them all the services that the other kids in the county were having and now provide them with more because we are um, the only qualifying uh, foster care charitable organization under the Arizona tax credit in okay. Yavapai County. Okay. And that was even when there were two organizations helping foster kids okay. in Yavapai County. Um, so we had more money. So we're able to now come over here and pick up the great work that the other nonprofit was doing, but expand that. Right. And then now that we're over here, we're starting to get, we're actually right now in the process of painting and getting, um, our new building over here for our offices ready, but we want to get familiar with this side of the mountain and see what these kids need. Because right now, Um, more kids on this side of the mountain are actually going into foster care than in Prescott. And before, it had been different. So it's like the perfect storm. Um, Is there a way to account for that? that I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I just know that there's more happening over here. Um, And I don't know if it's, you know, politics change. It depends. Some people um, might be more inclined to keep families together and give them yeah. you know supervised chances before they take the kid away yeah but i don't know it, it yeah. could be because of a drug use i know drug use is um pretty much the main reason in this county why kids are getting taken away right now well yeah and uh, we've talked before with so folks who kind of work on the practical end of the casa and it, some of those stories are just heartbreaking and you've heard them all and, and, and many of our listeners uh, have as well but today we're kind of focusing on the positive and what we can do after yeah. after some of those tragedies have occurred and uh, some of those things have happened where kids are removed from the homes uh, for one reason or another and getting them either reunited or finding uh, the right kind of solution to get, let them live their best lives, their children, and uh, they should be. And uh, this program uh, makes them at the forefront of all of our uh, all of our thoughts and efforts. Um, there's a, a number of individual kind of programs, aren't there, 
through CASA that yes. you can use. Tell me a little about that. Um, so I will just say we have nine programs, and they are okay. all geared towards um, enriching the lives of a child, meeting their needs, or helping them transition into adulthood. Okay. Um, so I'll just give examples of some of the programs. Perfect. So we have a case of success program, and that helps kids transition into adulthood. So that's working with kids that are 16 and okay. about to transition out of the foster care or age out of the foster care system. And then those up to 21 who have just aged out. And what that does is it allows them to, one, have somebody in their corner. Right. Um, when a lot of times, you know, I mean, 20% of them are homeless as soon as they age out of the system. They turn 18. And, and they're, that's 18. Okay. It's like, happy birthday. You're homeless now. Yeah. <laughs> like, take care of yourself. Um, so it gives them somebody that's in their corner. And then we help them overcome any barrier to success, whether that's they don't have a job, they don't have a place to live. Right. Um, and then we help them roadmap what success looks like long term for them because kids aging out of the foster care system face a host of uh, terrible statistics. Like only 50% of them will have a job. One in five of everybody that's in a U.S. prison right now was in foster care. So we're trying to really curb those statistics and help them. Um, and it works. I mean, nationwide, foster youth are only 3% likely to go to or there's only a 3% chance that they're going to go to some type of post-secondary education. So whether that's vote technical training, university, whatever. But with our program, that's 83% of the people that go through. Wow. Yeah. So we're wow. really changing lives. And it's like these kids are able to function and they know what credit is and how right. it works. And they have incentives and help. And then we have programs that help with Christmas. We have programs that supplement the money that the state gives for clothing allowance, which is $150 per year. Gosh, all these so things, we, as, we you, as you mention all of these, you know, you, you think very generically, okay, it's a good program. A lot of people, I think, in the county have heard of CASA and, and what it does. But as you start to enumerate some of these little things, Christmas time for little kids could be a barren, awful experience for them, in, depending on where they are and what they're going through at, at any given time. Um, yeah. Obviously, young people getting out of uh, um, what would you call aging out mm -hmm. uh, can be here again re-traumatizing, uh, given the past experience and a whole new world. Okay, like you said, ding dong, happy birthday, get out the door. I mean, it's almost yeah. could be it could be that cruel, except for the work that your group uh, and similar groups are doing. Yeah, so I mean that's why we exist. Oh, it's incredible just to, to just show kinda, them that we care. Yeah. Yeah, well, and there you go. Again, the money is one thing, but showing them yeah. that there are people in their corner, the words you used, yeah. um, is, is really something. Okay. It just kind of blows my mind when I think about <laughs> when I think about yeah. the people uh, that make things like this happen that uh, otherwise might not. Yeah, and I have to say, because when I describe what I do, people will say, well, doesn't the state provide foster families with money and everything it's like that? I so why do you? It's what I thought. I mean, they do. But here's the thing. It's like 46% or something like that. So almost half of the kids that are in our county, they're not living with um, some random stranger who went and got licensed to be a foster family. And so they're going to get all this money from the state. They're living with their grandma, their grandma, their grandpa, their aunt, their uncle with a family member. And that's called kinship placements. They don't get any help. Yeah. So sometimes... Well, we're buying beds and dressers and things like that. Right. So Johnny can go live with their grandma. Right. You know, so they don't get support from the state. Right. I mean, they do a little bit. I think it's a hundred and something now. It used to be $30 a month for the to longest time. Tokenism, almost. Yeah. I mean, almost. So we just make sure they can have it. So that way, this kid that's going through a hard time, and these kids are two times as likely to suffer from PTSD as U.S. war veterans. Well, sure. So it's like, I'm not surprised. what, they're two times as likely to suffer from somebody that's out there, like, risking their lives. They're in that much distress. Yeah. So we make sure they can do the things that will give them the outlets that they need, like, you know, join their football team or take karate or, you know, go to the prom or do anything that allows them to be a kid. So that's yeah. really what we do. And letting them know that strangers care and that those kinship families that stepped up to take care of their um, relative, that, hey, you're not alone just because the state isn't giving you as much as somebody else. That's terrific. 
We need to take another break. And uh, when we do, when we come back, we'll have to wrap up, Mona. But I want to ask you just quickly, uh, we'll reiterate the uh, the big event coming up here midsummer. Uh, but how can folks who are listening to this show right now help, either through volunteerism, uh, through whatever resources they might be able to pledge? Let's do that when we come back uh, from our short break. We'll be back to Countywide with our guest, Mona Stevens, Yavapai Casa for Kids Foundation. I'm Brad Miller. It's Countywide. We'll, we'll be back in just a second. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call Jana at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686. Your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We come back, our final kind of uh, minutes uh, with the terrific guest today, Mona Stevens, Yavapai Casa for Kids Foundation, and uh, the terrific stuff that they do. And we'll come back in a minute and mention uh, the uh, June 15th event. But if someone's listening right now, is there a number, a website? What can they do maybe to become either a volunteer, find out more about your organization, pledge resources? How do they reach out today? Yes. So if you want to reach out today, you can go to yc4kf.org. Okay. Um, say it, so say it, say it again for me. YC4KF.org. YC4KF.org. And okay. four is the number four. Okay. And the website. Um, and I'll be honest, I just kind of Googled Yavapai Casa and I think I found the way to yeah, it. Yeah, it's the first so thing that pops up. It'll pop right up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to call um, and talk to us, you know, s- schedule a time to come see our new location over here, find out what we do, see how you can get involved as we expand on this side of the mountain. Um, just give me a call. It's 928-445-0800, extension 4. And then I'll just say it one more time. It's 928-445-0800, extension 4. And your name is Mona Stevens. Yes. Championship for Children, a Midsummer Night's Dream, the big gala coming up on uh, on June 15th. Uh, folks, is that a, a ticketed event, I assume? How do we, if I want to participate there? Yep. Actually, tickets are on sale now. So yeah. if you go to that website... Um, and just click on events. It will be annual gala, and you can buy your tickets there. We are still looking for sponsors. There are sponsorship packets and all the things there as well, okay. but it gives you all the information. Okay, so take a look. Terrific cause. You have a Pai Casa for Kids Foundation. Our guest, Mona Stevens. I'm Brad Miller. It's countywide, and we'll see you next time. This has been Countywide. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday at this time. If you have a topic or guest idea that you'd like to suggest, email us, news at myradioplace.com.